it's as if the car reacts instantly by telepathy. If you drive over a coin, you can tell if it's heads or tails. I'm not actually sure who said that, but it sounds like something Clarkson might say, and I liked it, so here it is. Anyway, the thing is, in my experience, that statement couldn't be closer to the truth. If you've never had the chance to drive a GTR, especially the R34 or R35 or the R32 and the R33, that's, that's excellent also. Find a way to get your butt behind the wheel of any GTR, and if you aren't truly blown away by it, check and make sure you've still got a pulse. Nissan's GTR has always been a technical marvel, using technologies like multi-link suspension, high cast all-wheel steering, and Nissan's Atessa all-wheel drive system. But the real star of the show, and the key element to the car's success and passion following the world over, is the tech that lies underneath the hood inside the legendary RB26 DETT. So just what is it that makes Nissan's six-cylinder Screamer better than everyone else's? What is it that makes Godzilla, Godzilla? Let's get into it. It's a 2.6 liter, six-cylinder inline engine that straight from the factory made a quote unquote 276 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque in the early 90s. Those were strong numbers for any engine, and before any of you protest about listing the R35 earlier, I know, I know, it's a different engine. We'll get to that. This video is about the RB26, and when we talk RBs, I think it's important to understand why the engine was developed in the first place. It's all forged in racing. When Nissan entered Group A, which at the beginning was an all-Japanese touring car series back in 1985, they did so with an R30 Skyline. And they did okay. In fact, by 1986, they were actually winning. But little did the world know what the boys over at Nismo were working with for 1987. Thing is, they didn't want to just win. They wanted to absolutely dominate. And in this car, the guy's been break record after record. In 1987, when the R31 Skyline hit the tarmac, it started a trend no one saw coming. Nissan, with their RB20 DET, would change Japanese motorsports forever. By 1989, the world was taking notice and Group A racing was getting global attention. And by 1990, with the launch of the R32 Skyline, and more importantly, the RB26, it started absolutely destroying. Another 1-2 to Nissan, this time it's Mark Skype. From the time the car was introduced in 1990 to the end of Group A in 1993, the mighty Skyline won every single race in the league. It wiped the floor with its competitors at the 24-hour race held in Spa in Belgium with a 1-2-3 finish slaughtered the likes of Porsche and Ferrari in the JGTC. Nissan Skyline GTR, powered by its legendary twin-turbo inline six, was unstoppable. It was nicknamed Godzilla by the Australian motoring press, cause yeah, if you watch it rip down the straight at any racetrack, it looks like it literally breathes fire. But actually, because how badly it annihilated the V8-powered competition at Bathurst. When Nissan's engineers had run out of room for improvement on the existing high-performance inline six, the L28ET, they knew the only way forward was a complete ground-up redesign. Opportunities like that don't come around so often. The L engines had been in production since the 1960s, and if the past tells us anything about the future, these engineers knew that this might be the only completely brand new design they might ever have the chance to work on in their entire career. They pulled out all the stops with the ultimate performance version, the RB26 DETT, no expense was spared. At least before it went into production. There were some cost cutting measures, but we'll get to that. All DETTs use technologies like individual throttle bodies, sequentially fired fuel injectors, digital ignition control, which is a coil on plug design with a dedicated ignition controller, twin camshafts, and an aluminum cylinder head with four valves per cylinder. 
For the lump of metal that houses the cylinders, pistons, and crankshaft, we call that a crankcase or block for those of you who don't know, it's a closed deck design and it's made of super beefy cast iron. I wanna explain that one real quick. Most high performance engines today are made completely out of an aluminum alloy. It's lightweight and we figured out the right blend of herbs and spices to make it wicked strong as well. But iron blocks are almost always stronger. Iron is a much denser metal with high amounts of carbon, which makes them insanely strong, but also really heavy. And the closed deck part means that where most engines have space left in between the cylinder bores for coolant passages, the RB has those spaces completely filled in, which makes it way stronger. Let's talk about the moving parts inside the block. It's got a fully forged crankshaft, forged rods, pistons made of cast aluminum, and oil squirters baked right in to help keep the pistons themselves cool. But the 2JZ has all those things as well. What the 2J doesn't have though, is a differential built right into the oil pan. Yeah, really. The all wheel drive GTRs have a front diff that's bolted directly to the engine oil sump with a shaft that runs right through it to the other side. Super, super cool design, but also partially responsible for one of the RB's biggest weaknesses. That ultra strong block, well, they crack. Not in stock form or even lightly modded, but approach six or 700 horsepower and you're in the danger zone. You've just entered the danger zone. <laughs> See, blocks actually twist slightly under extreme loads. And since the RB is an inline six, it's pretty long. It's one of the only downsides to an inline six configuration. So if you take the amount of block might usually deflect at around 600 horsepower, and then add the twisting action you get from having the front diff bolted directly to it, it's just more than the stock block can handle, depending on how it's driven. <laughs> the good news is, they sell reinforcement plates to prevent this from happening, and they still build those plates today. That's how big of a following this engine has. Another big problem with the RVs, specifically the earlier ones found in the R32s, is the oil pump drive. They shatter, the oil pump stops spinning, and you need a new engine. The oil return passages in the cylinder head aren't big enough, and if you run the engine hard for a long time, you'll pump all the oil up into the head leaving the sump dry and, well, you'll need a new engine. Look, RBs aren't perfect, and you could make the argument they have several shortcomings, especially compared to their direct competitor, Toyota's 2J. The crankshaft position sensor is mounted on one of the camshafts for some reason. The cylinder head bolts break, and some of them were cast with the cylinder liners casted over slightly to one side. But like I said earlier, if you ever get the chance to drive one, do not pass it up. <laughs> the way they deliver the power, the howl they make at wide open throttle, it's <laughs> It's so much more character and soul in the RB than the 2J. Even if it is harder to make huge power with, it's overall very reliable. <laughs> Its oversquare design means it revs to 8,000 RPM, and without a doubt, it's one of the best sounding straight sixes in the world. <laughs> the first time I knew I wanted one was in Gran Turismo 3. But if you weren't fortunate enough to have a PlayStation back in the day, chances are you started wanting one after seeing Too Fast, Too Furious. Paul Walker rolled onto the silver screen, purging nitrous, and teenage boys and girls across the country went nuts. See, here in America, we never got the GTR officially, which means we never got the chance to experience Nissan's world-beating engine firsthand. Our only shot was through video games and cinema. The Supra, well, we got that. The GTR, though, that was forbidden fruit. And even though they never sold it here in the States, the car had made such an impression in the automotive enthusiast world, they knew they could use it as a star car in the franchise, and us car guys would instantly recognize it. Suddenly, Import Tuner had a GTR on the cover of almost every single issue. 
The Supra with the 2J, that was hot, but the GTR was unobtainable. And it's all thanks to Godzilla's beating heart, the RB26 DETT, a twin turbocharged masterpiece that's Nissan's gift to the world. When the R35 GTR launched without an RV in line six, I can honestly say the car lost some of its soul. I know the VR38 is insanely more powerful in stock form, and the car overall is a huge leap forward from the R34, but the engine is less soulful, less playful somehow. The rest of the car is the very essence of what a GTR was always supposed to be. It's tech forward, relatively affordable, and insanely, insanely fast. Nissan actually just started remanufacturing the RB series engines because enthusiast demand for them is so high. Even though it's been outclassed by more modern designs, the RB lives on. Hey, thanks for watching, peeps. We hope you liked this dive into the RB26. Go check out some of the other videos like this right over here, or go watch whatever YouTube recommends right over here. This is Trav, this has been Ideal, and I'll see you all next time here on Launch Control.